this is my home. This is my homeland. Uh, I may be buried in Wales. I had to play a woman about my age. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of speculation about your relationship with Rod Steiger and whether there may be another marriage. I mean, c could you tell us anything about that? <laughs> <laughs> Would you recommend marriage? For those who haven't tried it 200 times. <laughs> Six weeks, kind of going in and out, being pronounced dead, reading the um, tabloids, seeing Liz dead. That was a strange feeling because... Uh, they were the best reviews I've ever had. <laughs> you really are a knucklehead. <laughs> Do you think beauty has its own curse? No. <laughs> as long as you realize it's a very superficial thing and uh, something that can disappear in a second and means nothing. My problem in marriage, I think, came because I was more famous than my husband's, in most cases. Johnny Depp, oh, terrible. <laughs> if somebody says I can't do something, then I'll try and do it. If I have hurt anyone in my lifetime, I would change that. I would not choose to hurt anyone.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, press. Thank you for attending this afternoon's press meeting. Uh, brief introduction: We are honoured today to welcome Miss Taylor back to London. Um, on Sunday, as you know, she will receive the British Academy Fellowship, the 51st British Academy Film Awards, in association with Orange. Um, the British Academy of Film and Television Arts it is most. It is its most prestigious award, uh, and it's in recognition of her lifetime contribution to film. And she joins such legendary names as Lord Olivia, Ingrid Bergman, and last year's recipient, who is Sean Connery. Um, so just to say again, we're delighted to have you here, Miss Taylor, uh, to answer questions on your career. And so, without any further ado, I think the first question from the floor. Um, should we let's take the phrase out there? Good afternoon, uh, Fraser Massey, Now Magazine. Congratulations on the BAFTA Award. Can you tell me? When we're next going to see you, Gracie? When I'll be on the screen next? Uh, whenever they'll have me. <laughs> uh, I can't seem to get a job at the moment. Nobody wants to insure me. I'd love to act. I'd love to do a film. Uh, and I'm out there going, <laughs> but um, I'm uninsurable, I guess. Because I've had. You know, thing here, thing here. Hi, Baz Marable, how are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Can I ask you why we don't see you in this country so often? It's been seven years. And also, give me a sense of how you feel about uh, coming over to receive the Fellowship uh, Award. Oh, I'm thrilled at receiving it. And the reason I haven't been home for so many years is uh, for one simple reason. Seven years ago, um, I was given a little white Maltese dog, and your laws have prevented me from coming home. And that's, and that's the sole reason? Sole reason. Where is, where and is she? I don't quite understand it, and I'd like this to go on record. Uh, oh. A rat could hitch a ride on a taxi or a truck and go through the tunnel and arrive uh, at Paddington Station or wherever I wanted to go and say, howdy, folk. Uh, but dogs from America who have to have highly qualified papers just to stay in America. My dog has to have rabies shots, um, oh, what do you call them, tetanus shots. Uh, when we go to Mexico or when we go to anyone, she goes through the whole series of shots because I don't want to take any risks with her. And so I go through the same ritual wherever I take her. And I take her around the world with me. I even take her into restaurants, and nobody objects, and 
She's the best behaved dog in the world, the most intelligent, and she could come over here and explain the whole thing to some of your politicians. <laughs> so what have you told Sugar at home? What did you say to her when you left her in LA? Well, we both were crying, so it was difficult. <laughs> Next question, please. Hello, Ms. Taylor. My name is Mabel Broderick, and I'm from People Weekly. And I wanted to know what your impression was of um, the war in Kosovo and America's involvement in the war. Uh, um, I wish, well, I wish, first of all, that the war weren't happening. Um, I hope it doesn't turn into another Vietnam. I hope uh, America knows what she's doing politically in this situation. Um, I don't know enough about it to uh, make any comments, really, at this particular time. But it could accelerate into something disastrous where unnecessary lives are lost. And I think that would be awful. And I think everybody should sort of tend to their own wars. Another question? Maybe slightly more formalized? Yes. Hello, you look absolutely amazing. <laughs> um, okay. I've come from Wales, about 12 miles from Pontypridd I live, in a place called Barry. And um, because of your affinity with the Welsh, obviously, do you think, because of your reluctance to come to Britain because of the quarantine laws, that there's any chance that you could make, you'd think of taking this opportunity to visit Wales as well while you're actually here? Because you have a granddaughter there, yeah? Oh, well, right? I don't want to be away from her that long. You don't seem to understand. We're bonded at oh, the hip. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no, no, um, no possibility no, to visit I, Wales? Until the law is changed, I am still making my stance. I changed it for BAFTA, but I'm, I'm not going to utilize the advantages that have been open to me by being here. Uh, I'm going to go back uh, the minute it's over. When the law is changed, I'll come back Wales, here and I'll go to my old haunts. I'll go uh, visit the family in Wales. You still have a lot of love for the Welsh, yeah, and obviously with your connections. This is my home. This is my homeland. Uh, I may be buried in Wales. I don't like the feeling that uh, I can't go there because of this law, especially when, um, you know, because well, of the tunnel. Give you lots of love on behalf of the Welsh people, okay? Pardon? I give you lots of love on behalf of the Welsh people. I'm sorry, I couldn't understand. I give that. you lots of love on behalf of the Welsh people. I love the Welsh people. And they love you too. And <laughs> oh, so we'll all agreed on that then. Um, <laughs> yes, next question. Uh, Ms. Taylor, Susie Cormack from Sky News. Um, you've made 57 films in your career. Can you tell me what was the most important for Elizabeth Taylor? Uh, who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Can you tell me why? It was uh, the biggest challenge. I was 32 and I had to play a woman about my age. <laughs> 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 and uh, it was, I had to wear prosthetics and stuff. It was very uncomfortable, but I had to change my stance, my voice, um, everything about myself, my attitude, everything. And it was a real challenge, and I like challenges, so I liked that. Lots of people said you could do it were a young woman playing an older woman, you were renowned for your beauty, but not so much so much the acting talent, which was always there and the fans could see it. Was that what maybe spread you on? Probably. I like uh, to be controversial. If somebody says I can't do something, then I'll try and do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you for your time. One from the back, access Hollywood. Hello, I'm Jan Hamling from Access Hollywood. Can you tell us when the last time you visited the BAFTAs was? Have you been before? No. No, I haven't. 
this will be my first time. And how does it feel like to be getting this award? Oh, it's a great thrill. I'm very honored. And the list of people who won it before is awe-inspiring. Can you briefly tell us, have you uh, visited Johnny Carson? I know he's unwell. Have you spoken to him and do you know how he is? Johnny Carson? No, I, I didn't know he was unwell. Oh, um, they've asked me to ask you from America and they thought you might have spoken to him. No, I didn't even know he was unwell. Yeah, he's had um, a triple heart bypass, I think, so I'm sorry, I didn't know. No, I didn't. Okay. Thank you I much. hope with all my heart he's fine. Uh, a lot of my friends have had that operation and get through it stunningly. But my heart and prayers are with him. Thank you. Question. Hi, Mr. Mm -hmm. Amanda Hussein, News Direct. I was wondering, since you were born over here, whether this BAFTA award had a special meaning to you? Because I was born here? Yes. Of course. Yes. And is it good to be back in London? Pardon? Is it nice to be back in London? I mean, how oh, do you find London? Yes, the, there's so much I want to do, and there's just not enough time. Yes, Matthew. Hi there, it's uh, Matthew Wright from the Daily Mirror. Um, you know what these scandalous, gossip-mongering journalists are like? I mean, there's been lots of stuff coming from You're America. Not? not me. <laughs> Definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't dream of it. Um, but there, there's, there's been a lot of speculation about your relationship with Rod Steiger and whether there may be another marriage. I mean, c could you tell us anything about that? <laughs> <laughs> no way am I, am I ever getting married again. Ever, never, ever again. <laughs> Would you recommend marriage? <laughs> Would I what? Would you recommend marriage? For those who haven't tried it 200 times. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Next question. <laughs> yes, thanks, Amanda. Hi, Vanessa Langford, Independent Radio News. You said um, you weren't going to be on the screen for some time, but there were some stories that you were going to appear in a movie based on The Wizard of Oz. Is that just rumours or news? Well, I hope it comes through. It dep again, depends again on the insurance. And can you shed any more light on what the story's about or what, who you might be playing? Uh, it, it, it's a sort of unfantasized version of The Wizard of Oz with all the characters being real people. I would be Dorothy with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the straw man would be a real man with the same kind of flaws, but not made of straw, and he wouldn't blow away in the wind, I hope. And uh, it would just be a story about real people with the same qualities and flaws, and um, how it's worked out, how they work themselves out. <coughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Moody from Channel 5 News. Um, a lot's been made of Gwyneth Paltrow and the fact that uh, in her Oscar speech she cried. Do you think tomorrow night when you, or Sunday night when you get the award, you might cry as well? I hope not because I won't be wearing waterproof mascara. <laughs> 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 How does it compare winning this award to, say, getting an Oscar? Uh, well, it's like the uh, English Oscar, isn't it? Does it mean as much to you? Yes. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, have another. Do you get to get two of these? <laughs> Three? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a question from Radio 1 of them. Hi, Miss Taylor. It's Sam Singh from Radio 1 and Radio 5 Live. I wondered, do you ever get bored of being a legend? <laughs> well, you see, to me, a legend sounds like something dead. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Alexander the Great was a legend. And I don't feel dead at all. So I don't know what it feels like to be a legend. And another question. What about... Over here. 
Hello, Ms. Taylor. It's Lydia Wilson from World Entertainment News Network. Um, is there somebody in Hollywood, a star, that uh, reminds you of yourself? Is there somebody favorite you have in Hollywood, a young actress or a young actor? That reminds me of myself? Of yourself when you were younger. Well, they all seem a little saner. <laughs> <laughs> in what way? Well, I don't know. They're more serious than I was. I was... Um, I enjoyed doing other things. I was never totally dedicated to making motion pictures. I loved doing other things as well. My life was not just one road with, you know, no vision on the side. Um, what do you like doing in your spare time at the moment? The same things I enjoy doing then, traveling, uh, playing, being silly, um, just uh, being a little unorthodox. It's nice to see you. Thank you. That has another question. <coughs> you said earlier that you hi. didn't have t you don't have time, hi, to do everything you'd like to do. I think the last time you were here, you said you wanted to go to have fish and chips or sausage and mash and. I sort of have let had loose, so many bangers and mash that uh, yesterday uh, I thought I was going to be ill. <laughs> <laughs> but I have survived and I'm looking forward to another meal. <laughs> I, Elizabeth, once upon a time, you know, the Dorchester was almost your home. You stayed here so I many know. times over the years. What sort of memories, you know, you and Burton and other people? Can you give us a sense of those days? Oh, well, God, I almost died in the Oliver Messel suite. Uh, there's that memory that kind of sticks out and will never <laughs> go away. And they carried me out on a stretcher through the Oliver Messel banquet room and there was a young Welshman in there. Uh, the party was being given for his engagement and Lord Evans was attending the party, the Queen's um, anaesthetist. Is that the right way to pronounce it? Is that the right way to pronounce yeah. it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, they carried me through. I was blue and I wasn't breathing. And uh, the young man they were giving the party for was Richard's nephew. Uh, it's like six degrees of separation. And I was put in the ambulance and they did a tracheotomy in the ambulance. Then they put me on the uh, operating table for 18 hours. And I remember hearing them talking. And I was trying to communicate and say, like, with my eyelashes or my finger or something, I was trying to let them know that I could hear that they were talking about me in the past tense. Oh. And it was like, hey, I'm not dead. So could you kind of, like, talk about me as if I were alive? Because it would make me feel much better. And uh, 18 hours is a long time. Anyway, uh, that was six weeks, kind of going in and out, being pronounced dead, reading the um, tabloids, seeing Liz dead, that people had saved for me. And that was a strange feeling because uh, they were the best reviews I've ever had. <laughs> Question on the right there. Um, I'm from Religious Broadcasting, BBC, and I just wondered whether God featured in your life at all. Oh, my, my God, yes. <laughs> yes, I don't think I'd be here if I didn't believe in God. Uh, I don't believe in... I've studied so many religions, and I believe in them all. And... I think my sense of spirituality is pro probably stronger than 
say, my sense of uh, Judaism, of which I still am. Uh, it's just a sense of communication, of, uh, well, spirituality. Did you pray? Did you find that prayer is helpful? Yes, but again, my, my prayers are sort of in and take, take form in uh, a kind of conversation with God. Questions back there. Uh, Ms. Taylor, Victor Oliver, Teletext. Shall I, I, I can't I'm here. see. Hello. Oh. Um, I, about your employment prospects, would you ever consider buying the rights to a novel and producing it as a movie? And if so, which novel or story would most fascinate you? I suppose the kind of role that you would like to play. Uh, I, d I don't really understand that. Would I buy a book? The, the rights to it, if there is a novel or a story. Um, some performers do this, they... Uh, no, first of all, I'd get somebody else to buy it and pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd become empowered as a result. That's what? what? You'd become even more powerful than you are already, in the sense of producing the movie. I, I could do that if I wanted to, but I don't. Right. Um, and would there be a novel or story that, at the moment, would fascinate or interest you in any way? There's been talk of my doing a remake of The Visit. That interests me. Thank you. Here's another one from Sky. Now, will everybody shut their microphones off, please? <laughs> Turn your cameras away. This is going to sound like Mount Vesuvius. <laughs> of the Kleenex up my nose. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Excellent. We'll resume. Ms. Taylor, it's often said that beauty is a curse and you have had health problems. What do you, do you think that's partly you paying for, the, for being one of the most beautiful women in the world? Do you think beauty has its own curse? No. <laughs> I think to be considered pretty or beautiful, or how, however you want to put it, is lovely. As long as you realize it's a very superficial thing and uh, something that can disappear in a second and means nothing. It's just, uh, we all have the same features, they're thrown together in different ways. and. Uh, they have nothing to do with life. It's been said that you always thought that Ava Gardner was the more beautiful of you. Is that true? Did you really not realize just quite how beautiful you were? Or was it just always apparent because people told you? Oh, I think Ava Gardner was the most beautiful woman in the world. Hello, Miss Taylor. Um, I was wondering, what did you think of Sophia Loren's glamorous appearance at the Oscars this uh, past? Didn't she look glorious? <coughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, she looked fabulous. Mm -hmm. As a woman, I was very proud of her. Mm -hmm. Just behind the matter. Go on with the topic of beauty. Yep, though. okay. One more for that. I mean, on the, going on with beauty, as it were, I mean, who, who are the young actresses around today who you admire, if at all? <laughs> <laughs> you might not like any of them, I don't know. You think I'm very negative. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, Demi Moore, Julia Roberts, um, Natasha Kinski. Uh, oh Lord help my poor poverty stricken brain. See I had brain surgery and some of it was left on the table. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh there are so many beautiful uh, actresses around. And really stunning and that can act. Uh, and the English 
girls, I'm sorry, ladies. Uh, I have difficulty with names of the new uh, sort of virgin crop of actresses that have arisen out of uh, England in the last year or two. Um, and I'm very bad at names. But they're all beautiful, they're all talented. I mean, the Oscars, all, all you had to do was look at the list. It was, you know, rural Britannia. Yes, uh, Miss Taylor, it's me again. Sorry about that. Um, uh, you're wearing velvet. You were in a film called National Velvet all those years ago. Tomorrow is Grand National Day, ironically. Are you going to be lo watching the race, and have you got any tips for us? <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there's a logic there Good somewhere. <laughs> you really are a knucklehead. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the kind of things that's been said about me. <laughs> I'll leave you to figure. Yes, <laughs> Rachel, I think there was one at the back there. Sean, at the back. Hello, Mr. Taylor. Rosie Millard from the BBC. You've had an enviably long film career in what is a very harsh business. What do you put your longevity in Hollywood down to? What are your tips? I have no idea because I haven't worked in ages. Uh, I don't do anything to try and make myself visible to the public, whatever public, uh, you know, you can go into Westwood or any Santa Monica, uh, you can do anything, nobody pays any attention to you at all, it's wonderful. Uh, but you're still regarded as a huge, huge star. Well, people just have good taste. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever visit your hometown? This is my hometown. Uh, the house that I was born in is in Hampstead Heath. That's a question for me. I think somebody should put a plaque up on that wall. <laughs> E.T. <laughs> 8 Wildwood Road. Hi, if you could give women today um, younger women, any tips about men and marriage over with your past experience? What might they be? <laughs> uh, don't be such suckers. <laughs> what, us or them? Uh, the women, I think, in when I was young, would do anything to please their husbands. And we didn't have a sense of independence. There was no kind of equal rights. Uh, we did, uh, it, did uh, it didn't affect me. I'm talking about watching and observing <coughs> other women. Um, my problem in marriage, I think, came because I was more famous than my husband's, in most cases. And that caused difficulty. But for women in, in general, I think you can look at the old magazines and see them with an apron and washing the dishes. And uh, they took the back seat uh, to the husband to such an extent that they kind of lost their identity. And women don't do that now. Do you think that men today in the 90s still have a problem when women are more successful than men? <coughs> today, if you were getting married, you'd have the same problems. No, I think that there's more... I think that, that because of more equality, um, men look up to women more. And women have more of a say in the marriage and raising of the child children and it's more of a healthy mutual um, goodness look how we've come uh, the house where I'm staying is all 
Victorian art. Wow, can you imagine being a wife then? Thank you. Um, Jeff Moody, Channel 5. We've talked a lot about the beauty of women. Who do you think is the most attractive man in Hollywood at the moment? Hmm. Sean Connery. Uh, all the young ones are cute. Um, Johnny Depp. Oh, terrible. Um, Brad Pitt? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Antonio Banderas? Yes. Leonardo? Yes. Thank you. I'm very bad at names. Keep coming. <laughs> I think we're going to call a last question, gentlemen. So, Tony, Mike. Something really intelligent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> on second thought. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. If, if you had if I, unique broadcasting, if you had to live your life again, what would you change? If I had my life as Elizabeth Taylor to live over again, what would I change? Nothing except if I have hurt anyone in my lifetime, I would change that. I would not choose to hurt anyone. But other than that, I wouldn't change anything. So I think it might be a nice note to finish on. Just one last thing. Richard always used to say you were a bit of a hell racer. Are you still? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except I don't drink anymore, thank God. Otherwise, I'd probably be dead. Miss Taylor, the last minute, the last time, and I had a bit of taste of it, and it never came out. And I said, one shot. Oh, poor boo boo. Sure. And after that, we'll definitely wrap it up. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Can I...